No handouts. This will be made public tomorrow. We're good. Oh, if you're going to walk around. No set, George? Yeah, hold on. I have to say a few words before you. I think. Yes. I'll open it up to the Pledge of Allegiance. Turn it over to you. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight to the Gateway School District Building and Grounds meeting for Thursday, June 14th, 2018. Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was going to ask Mrs. Kelly Perry to lead us in the national anthem, but I, I, I didn't want didn't to put you on the spot there, but uh, I know you had experience doing that. Yes. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the Building and Grounds Chair, Mr. George Lapsovich. Uh, he has a few words, and then he'll turn it over to me so we can proceed with uh, this evening's presentation. Thank you, Dr. Short. Welcome, everybody. Um, I've been on a, uh, the team for about the last year. We've been working our backsides off, seeing what's the best for the children in the school district and it, for it being um, feasible with the money, money we have. And uh, it's going pretty good. And I have to thank uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Short for their hard work, too. But uh, Mr. Short got all the... Uh, facts and that we, we have to note for tonight. So I'll just turn it over to Mr. Short, Dr. Short. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lapsovich. Um, also, before we begin, uh, Mrs. Sarucci approached me and wanted to say a few words uh, before we begin today's, I should say, tonight's presentation. I guess that's not working. They are working, but I, I can hold that if you Which mic picks up the recording? Okay. Thank you for letting me take time away from this committee meeting because what I have to say isn't really about building and grounds. Uh, so Monday evening was a scheduled contract negotiation meeting between the district and the teachers union representatives of which I was in attendance. I feel that the time has come for me to bring the public up to speed with the details of the negotiations. It's a large part of our budget, which we'll, we'll, we will be voting on in two weeks. In fact, 70% of our budget is salary, health care, and pension costs, all of which are directly related to the budget conversations we have been having and the building consolidation measures, which we're discussing this evening. Regarding contract negotiations, we are very close to one another, but we are at the point where neither side seems to want to give any more. Both sides have met regularly and worked out most of the other details of the contract. Where did we start, you might ask, and where are we now? We started with the teachers wanting a five-year contract with step movement every year and a 4% raise in salary in addition to the step movement. The district started with an offer of a half step per year or a full step every other year and a 0% raise on the current scale. What is a step, you might ask? in the public. A step is a pre-planned movement in pay a teacher has built into the contract from year to year. Teachers do not consider this a raise as it is built in part of their career advancement. So when you hear them say that they have not had a raise, they are not referring to step movement, they are referring to percent increases on top of the steps. A step increase is the equivalent of anywhere from three to five percent salary increase. A raise is considered to be an increase by a percentage of those fixed numbers already on the scale. The scale can be found on the website under the Human Resources tab under Collective Bargaining Agreements. It's also worth noting that the district agreed to no increase in health care costs for the EPO plan. Teachers pay 10% of that. The PPO plan will increase from 12 to 15%, thus the reason for offering a shorter contract as we anticipate health care premiums will continue to rise. Where are we today? The district has offered a three-year contract with a full step movement each year and a 1% salary increase for year three. 
The teachers want the 1% for both year two and three. A strong driving force for the, for the percent increase is for those at the top of the scale who are frozen and don't see any movement. 1% doesn't sound like a big difference, does it? Some say just get it done. I say, how will we pay for it? We need to have a balanced budget and the money must come from someplace. So let's look at the numbers. What does step movement cost the district? About $404,000 of new money next year. What will the 1% raise cost the district? About 229,000 per year forever because raises don't go away. Keep in mind that every year as more teachers move up in their career path, these numbers will also continue to increase, except for some deductions and retirements. This year we have four, and those numbers have been factored into the budget. Let's look at the budget for next year. You can find this info on the website under Business Finance tab. We're starting with a $1. million deficit, which is why administration recommended the tax increase. If we raise taxes, the max allowable, we generate $1.2 million. It has been proposed that we borrow from our fund balance about $600,000 to balance the budget rather than cutting programs for our students. The budgetary number for next year includes the step for the teachers but not the raise. We also put on hold the scoreboard, cut out some of the iPad purchases at the middle school level and made some other cuts in various departments. We're not hiring an additional principal with the loss of one recently, but the good news is that we haven't cut any programming for our kids thus far. What do I think are important contributing factors to note regarding the budget? With the loss of the mall appeal, we will lose $500,000 of income moving forward and potentially more in the future. Because of the pension crisis years ago, and this is no fault of our teachers, we must continue to pay more into teacher pensions annually. This is expected to continue over the next three to four years. Next year, our pension contribution increases $300,000 of that, the state should reimburse back half. So to summarize, next year in new money, we need $400,000 for step movement, 150,000 additional pension contribution, loss of a half a million dollars in mall revenue, and if we add the raise, we need an additional 229,000, and that's just year one. That's more than the 1.2 million tax increase we'll generate. We've already agreed to, to the percent raise for year three. During year three, we also have a big increased payment in our bond refinance of $1.2 million. So there's a good chance you are looking at a tax increase next year as well. And that's why we are here today to talk about consolidation of schools, keeping the district strong in years to come. When I ask my colleagues how they recommend we pay for the 1% raise for year two, should we approve, the answer was that we will raise taxes. We already are raising taxes to balance the budget, so that won't cover it. If you ask the business manager, he will say we have to borrow an additional $229,000 from fund balance. Now totaling $829,000 we take from fund balance just to balance our budget. Our last negotiation meeting was Monday night, as I stated. We did have some heart-to-heart -heart conversations about why both, both sides feel strongly over their positions. The main point that I tried to emphasize for our side is that this has nothing to do with whether we value our teachers and think they deserve a raise for being excellent at their jobs as they are, although I can guarantee several of them are not happy with me right now. But I was elected by the taxpayers of this district to do a job, and that is who I represent, and that is who I answer to. We do value our teachers, and that's proven with the fact that they are the 19th highest paid in the state. It all comes down to the fact that we have a finite amount of money with which to manage, and I don't think it's good practice to use fund balance to balance our budget, nor do I desire to raise taxes on Pitt Karen, whose median income is $30,000, and Monroeville, whose median income is $54,000, while our teacher's median income is $85,000. Not to mention we have over 20% of our population being senior citizens on fixed incomes. I asked the union representative how he suggested that the district come up with the funds to cover the raise. And the answer was to spend less on computer purchases, return to books, and cut back on building improvements. My opinion is that it is the school board's responsibility to also maintain the facilities we have, and the two are not mutually exclusive, not to mention we actually cannot use money earmarked for capital improvements to pay salaries. If we have to raise taxes and borrow from our fund balance to balance our budget, we are not doing a good job. Our community will continue to decline as households and businesses are taxed more. 
and we won't have much of a fund balance in the future years. It is my opinion that the goal of the school board is to make sure the district is financially sound for years to come, and we have some big challenges facing our community as businesses continue to close and the state continues to disappoint in regards to several issues that affect education and funding. A financially sound school district will benefit the teachers and the employees who work here. The alternative we face if our expenses continue to exceed our income is to continue to raise taxes or cut teachers or cut programming for our students or a combination of all three. We have done well up to this point, but we must continue to stay the course. We must learn from districts around us like Plum and not make the same mistakes they made, which include contracts they couldn't afford, zero tax increases for prolonged periods of time, and using fund balances to regularly balance their budget. Let me be clear that I am not speaking for my fellow board members. I am only speaking as chairperson for the negotiation committee, and I thank you for hearing me out this evening on this important topic. Now I'll turn it back over to Mr. Dr. Short for the building and grounds meeting. Thank you. Can we just officially call him Mr. Doctor now? Mr. Doctor. <laughs> I think everyone in here has known me as just Bill over the years. I mean, I'm a humble individual, and you guys know that. And a little bit longer, that, that's for sure. But uh, t t tough act to follow there, Mrs. Cerucci. Sorry, I didn't take That's all right. That's all right. Uh, yes. Uh, I would not at this point in time open it up for comments. Uh, I wanted to get to my presentation with the Building and Grounds Committee and I wanted to at least introduce the idea of this is a interactive forum, meaning we do not have the handout for the presentation. It will be online as we typically do tomorrow morning. Uh, a lot of this information has been shared with truly everyone over the last 10 years, and I'm going to introduce everything with that initial comment. Uh, put you in the, in the Wayback Machine, as it's called. Going back to 1983, I'm not going to ask how many of us were, were even alive and born in that year. Jane, I'm, I'm looking, I'm not saying a word. I'm just, okay. 1983 was uh, w one of those years in Gateway's history that reorganization to the 10th degree occurred. And, and what I mean by that, the ninth grade, for the first time, moved up to Gateway Senior High School. And for those of us who were involved in that process, myself included, as a student. See, I, I know all of you are kind of doing the math in your head. As a student, there was a lot of questions, a lot of meetings concerning whether or not ninth grade was appropriate, both socially and educationally speaking, to be involved in a high school setting with grades 10, 11, and 12. Throughout Gateway's existence from 1958 onwards, the high school was three grades. Understanding that those three grades during a series of four to five years in the 70s, each grade level averaged nearly 800 students per class. So when you add those three grade levels together, 10, 11, and 12, there were 2,400 students in this facility. That's prior to the renovations, which we've completed, prior to a wing that was added on, it's a lot of students. Next year, Gateway High School, with grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, will have an opening day, opening day enrollment projected at 1,060 students. Ten years ago, in 2007-2008, we had in excess of 1,600 students at this building, grades 9 through 12. 
with you, when you look at the enrollment declines, it's not regulated to just gateway school district. Almost every school district in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has seen dramatic declines in enrollment. When you look at the average birth rate in Pennsylvania nationally, you will see from 30, 40 years ago, the average was almost 2.53 or four students, or four children, I should say. We're averaging less than 1.5. Families are not having multiple children. Thus, schools enrollment are declining. Gateway was faced with this issue in 1983. At that point in time, we had two middle schools. South Junior High School, which is the current Mossside Middle School, and Monroeville North Junior High School, which is Gateway Middle School. The grade levels were seven, eight, and nine. Each grade level averaged over 400 students per class bringing the enrollment totals of nearly 1,200 students at South Junior High and Gateway Middle School, Monroeville North Junior High. When you look at the enrollment for next year at Gateway Middle School, and I do have Mr. Telly here, uh, we're probably projecting around 490 students. Four hundred and ninety students in grades seven and eight. At Mossside Middle School, we're projecting slightly higher, roughly around 510, 520. When you add those two numbers together, it still does not equal what the enrollment was of one middle school that we had operating in the 80s. Overall enrollment has decreased from nearly 8,000 students down to 31, almost 3,200 students. At that point in time, South Junior High School became Gateway Upper Elementary. They made a name change to Mossside Middle School. It still maintained the two grades, five and six, Gateway Middle School, seven and eight. Over the course of the next 30, 40 years, we've had declining enrollment. With that, our facilities themselves have aged. In 2010, I believe it was, the school board decided to do a feasibility study, an assessment study, with the idea of closing Pitt Cairn Elementary, one of the original buildings that made up the Gateway School District. Pitt Cairn Elementary, I believe, was built in the early 1900s, needed a lot of investment, repair money, nearly two, three million dollars. At that point in time, the district decided with enrollment and other factors that in their judgment, it would be best to shutter the building, close it, and dispersing the students to Cleveland Stewart Elementary and Ramsey Elementary, thus moving from five elementary buildings to four. That was our latest reorganization within our district, moving from five to four elementaries. With every action, there's always a reaction. The closing of Pick here in elementary was met with a lot of resistance, understandably so. 
Some people questioned the assessment study completed, that it was biased in their findings. To this day, there's a lot of resentment from the community of Pitcairn with the closing of that building, which subsequently was bought back by the borough of Pitcairn and then leased to Propel. At that point in time, it was estimated that the district would save two to $300,000 per year with the closing of Pitcairn Elementary. Within two years, it turned into a $3 million loss per year for our district. We have been able, through our achievement and the successes of the academics here at Gateway, bring a lot of those students back. However, there are still students within our boundaries that attend Propel Pickern. So with every action, there's a reaction. And no question at that point in time, it was a negative reaction for the district. Moving forward, the one piece of information from that assessment study really highlighted the fact that we have two aging facilities which currently occupy our middle schools. Gateway Middle School was constructed, and I know there's a little plaque right outside, uh, probably 1954, 1955. Do the math, 60 years old, still operational, bones are good. We've done a lot of work, recent additions, added a wing to the uh, far side of the building, nearest the parkway. A lot of strong features of that building. Larger classrooms, nearly 1,000 square foot classrooms compared with Mossside Middle School, which has nearly 600, 700 square foot classrooms. South Junior High School, Mossside Middle School was constructed in 1960 with fewer renovations completed over the years. And the difference between the two buildings, and we'll highlight these later on, are of course the auditorium, fields, parking that are available. So we're at the crossroads as a district. Currently we have two middle schools operating at nearly 50% capacity from nearly 30 year, 40 years ago. It's not fair to the taxpayer to continue to operate two middle schools <coughs> when the reality is either through three grade configuration, six, seven, eight, or four grade configuration, five, six, seven, eight, would occupy the building. Four years ago, we sat here in the LGI, did a presentation with reorganization. I do have a few of uh, our, our colleagues here who spent hundreds of hours, and I do mean hundreds of hours. In fact, uh, Mr. Telly and myself and Mr. Murphy uh, had to call our wives and, and order pizza one evening because we were breaking down what a potential schedule would look like for a 7 through 12 high school, which was not a recommended reorganization on our part. But we had to, at that point in time, list multiple scenarios, which I will cover here in a few minutes. The data we've analyzed Mr. Brown, I have to thank because we've spent countless hours researching, looking up old board minutes, examining when certain wings were added. He's done an analysis of the buildings as far as anything from asbestos abatement, lighting, 
HVAC, boilers, air, windows, to get to this point where the district needs to act. So with your patience, and I please ask everyone here, if you do have a question, please raise your hand, interject. We don't have that many people here. Simply say, hey, Bill, I have a question. Uh, and we will definitely stop, and hopefully one of us in attendance here would be able to answer that. Okay? Perfect. One of the issues that always faces school districts when they examine opportunities for reorganization or consolidation is understanding the process. Step one of this process, preliminary, consider all options. Four years ago, we did consider all options. We brought those forward to the community, to the school board, to the constituents. Multiple building and grounds meetings. Over the last three years, beginning my third year here as superintendent, you will notice that we have had, as I listed in red, several building and grounds meetings specifically designated to address this issue and in, to inform the public about where we, where we are at with this process. Culminating this past year with the school board at that point in time designating the 360 group as the realtor for the district to begin listing the Gateway Middle School property. At this point in time, the property of nearly 27 acres is for sale. There has been no price set for the property. Our realtor is accepting offers at this point in time. We have not had a formal offer on the property, which has been listed for probably three or four months, I believe. There are a lot of questions from parties that would be interested in purchasing the property. They have to, in fact, do their own studies, whether or not that's traffic, soil, building inspections. I do know Mr. Brown and even myself had walked a building with a prospective buyer. So all of these are factored in, and it's not something that someone would simply drop an offer on the table. They have to, in fact, do their research. Step two, community involvement. Community committees, which you'll hear about at the end of my presentation. It's important that we have that transparency before any decision is made moving forward. I will be sending out invitations to the staff, community members, board members, parents, anyone who would be interested in joining a committee. And the objectives for that committee will be discussed as I move forward. Holding public meetings to disclose information, understanding that there are a lot of rumors flying around out there, a lot of questions by everyone, that perhaps we can even designate a website or an attachment to our current website with FAQs that would be generated from the public or community teachers, et cetera. Once this board is committed to making a decision, I, as superintendent of schools, must notify PDE that we would be looking to close a building. Notice I did not put a date on this. And then, of course, there are public hearings and a board final vote, which must commence and be submitted to the Pennsylvania Department of Education to formally close a building. This process to close a building with public hearings usually takes 90 days. 
I would be asking the board by December to make a recommendation and commit to one of the aforementioned recommendations that we will have within the PowerPoint tonight moving forward. I talked earlier about, I'm sorry, Mr. McIntyre. Along, along with all that, it might be good to, for the public to know that when we do send it up to TDE, they do a study, an analysis of our plan to make sure that it's feasible and that they, they can approve or disapprove if they don't feel like what we're doing would be appropriate for the community. Could you repeat that for the folks at home, please? After the formal application is submitted to PDE, of course, the Secretary of Education and his department would review the information that we present, reasons, rationale for closing. The building that would occupy the former students that would be housed is sufficient, meets all the requirements, special ed, et cetera. They would have to agree and sign off in that process before we would officially shut down the building or shutter the building. Enrollment projections moving forward to next year. I just wanted to highlight this information just to show you. And these are constantly moving. When I say constantly, I mean, there's ins and outs every day. I do know we have a number of staff here. We are a transient school district. We do see students coming in and out throughout the course of the school year. So these numbers are moving. However, I did want to give everyone an understanding of where they currently sit. Four years ago when we sat here, these five options were presented to the school board at the time and our community. And when I say it was a packed house here, I don't know, did we have anyone that was present? Thank you. E even though I did the majority of the talking and I was booed, a lot of these recommendations <laughs> were not just joking, were not my ideas, I'll just say that. Option one, and please read through these carefully. Remember, these were just merely options that were presented four years ago. Move Gateway Middle School to Gateway High School. That was uh, quite an endeavor myself. Mr. Telly, Mr. Murphy undertook with really uh, seeing if a schedule, master schedule would fit at the high school with grades seven through 12. Close and sell Gateway Middle School to renovate Mossside Middle School into a K-6 or 5 to 8 building. And notice I do have 5 to 8 there because there were options presented. <coughs> Option two, move fourth grade only to Mossside Middle School. All fourth graders close Gateway Middle School, move Ramsey K-3 to to CSE, UP, Evergreen, K3, and basically closing Ramsey. The rationale for closing Ramsey at the time was, do we have any teachers here from Ramsey? It's good. Gas, electric, water at the time. If you're familiar with Ramsey Elementary, it is an open air concept building this was the norm in the early 70s. It quickly faded away, I might add, with the open pod classroom. You're over there, you're trying to teach, you, you hear everything. It's a difficult process. So the idea at the time, uh, we have made some renovations to Ramsey, uh, but based on everything with it was to shutter it. Option three, reorganize kindergarten into Ramsey, one, two, the grade levels into Evergreen, three to six in Mossside Middle, seven to 12, Gateway High School, close CSE, UP, and Gateway Middle School. I think that's whenever I was booed. <laughs> Option four, Move fifth grade to CSE, Evergreen, Ramsey, and UP. Move sixth grade, cross the highway to Gateway Middle School, 
and close Moss Side Middle School. That was the option at the time that's very similar to the one that the board accepted to move forward with at this point in time based off of recommendations from parents, faculty, et cetera. And option five, move five, six to Gateway Middle School, close Moss Side Middle School, which is a hybrid of four. If you notice option four in blue was a recommended option to pursue at this point in time. Understanding that no decision has been made, no vote by this board has been taken. And I did list with the asterisk, board approval and PD hearings commences in February 2019 in order to make this happen. Reminder, at this point in time, a feeler has been put out to see what kind of price we can receive as a district for Gateway Middle School. If a potential buyer does not meet the requirements of this board, and I do not know what the requirements would be, we'd have to have those conversations. We'll just say uh, an offer of $4 million. Clearly, at least I hope, <laughs> this board would not entertain the offer of $4 million for that property. So there are options and decisions that have to be made moving forward. Notice the heading, contingent sale of Gateway Middle School property, contingent. Hypothetical, if there is a substantial offer that this board would be willing to accept. Remember I said hypothetical. Write that word down. Thank you. <laughs> Move sixth grade to Gateway Middle School. Move fifth grade to CSE, UP, Evergreen, and Ramsey. We would close Moss Side Middle School, raise the building, then build new. Hypothetical if the right offer is accepted by this board. In order for this process to continue with the contingent sale of Gateway Middle School, notice the school year, 2019-2020, not 2018-19. We are committed fully this upcoming school year to the same configuration we have. Same configuration, four elementaries, five, six, seven, eight, nine to 12. Nothing will change this coming year. However, if the board receives an offer, they accept it. We are prepared organizationally to make the move with the PDE process, the K to five configuration, a six to eight middle school, and you see the enrollment numbers, and a nine to 12 high school. One thing that's important to understand with this format, educationally speaking, you're eliminating a transition. Very important. Children are creatures of habit. The anxiety builds in them. That's why we have eight periods, seven periods of consistency every day. However, something happens when they finish their fourth grade schooling. The butterflies, the anxiety, they're moving to a bigger building. Just when they get acclimated, consistent, comfortable, not only with the building, the staff, the administration, they're uprooted again and go where? 
across the highway and they got to see that Mr. Telly guy. That really brings out the anxiety. <laughs> but it starts all over. Where's my locker? Am I going to understand the building layout? Am I right? When you see the seventh graders, you see it every year. They're there for two years and guess what? Ship to the high school. Same thing happens over again. Four transitions not educationally sound. Three far better. This process definitely supports that. Spent many hours with Mr. Telly, and you'll see a building map here diagramming how hypothetically that would work with grade six over at the middle school. And I will also show you here in a few minutes how fifth graders would fit comfortably in our four current K to four buildings. I'm sorry. Yes, question. Admin. We would I'm sorry. We would still have Mossside Middle School. I mean, it would not be raised during this school year, the next school year, I should say, whenever it's closed. So the question was, where does the administration It would go? still operate right there. I've had dis discussions with Mr. Brown about maintaining an acceptable heat per insurance guidelines for an existing building. Everything else in the building would be shuttered. Admin would still stay there. It would be sitting there pending. What was the question, please? Yes. What was the question? Uh, what would we do with the building if it would be closed? Which building? Mossside Middle School. What would we do with Mossside Middle School when what? When it's closed and the students would move to Gateway Middle School and drop down to the K-5 to buildings. Know, th these are great questions because I've had some people you know, from the public you know, ask us whether we even have thought of a plan and if we uh, take a building down, have we even thought that the, the students might need to be educated somewhere? So this is the answer to that yes. question that we've completely thought it through. Go ahead, I'm sorry. And, and the idea is under this contingent sale, meaning if we would sell Gateway Middle School we would shift the students over to allow the building to be raised really flattened. And then we would build a new middle school. So the question is, why would we be shutting down Mossside Middle School? What if we don't sell? It's coming up. <laughs> Further slides here will answer that question. If you, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Did that involve some like redistricting? The numbers from the beginning of the May meeting at UP are significantly different than they're up there now. You're one step ahead of me. All right, I'm just <laughs> no, good question. Yeah. And if you do have a question, um, I believe Maiko was probably going to get another microphone for questions. I'm assuming he is. So, probably. If you can just follow the flow chart for a moment. Understanding, again, a pending sale of the middle school. In order for us to occupy Gateway Middle School with a possible sale, we would have to negotiate if the buyer is willing. All of this is, of course, hypothetical a reverse lease in order to house our students and to educate them during a period of three school years. 2019-20, 2020-21, and this upcoming current year, 1819. The reverse lease would allow our students to receive their education unobstructed 
while a possible middle school was being built at Mossside Middle School? Question. It's a lot to ask, however, when they occupy, and typically, and we discussed this with our realtor, it would take upwards of one year to even close on a property that large and the monetary value of the property. So one year would simply be to do the work to sell the property. An additional year or two would factor in for studies that they may have on the property itself traffic, land use, right of ways. And wouldn't their architects need a little time to design Absolutely. how to reconstruct or refurbish the building and yes. then they would have to get all the mm -hmm. approvals and all of that takes time and then once our folks would move out, their team would move in and perform the refurbishing or you know tear down and rebuild. Correct. So it simply does take a lot of time for That's corporations very good to question. move. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility that a charter school could buy that property essentially not having to make much change, being that it's a school going into a school? Very good question. What was the question, please? Charter school, could they, through a potential ghost buyer, purchase the Gateway Middle School property and then, boom, it becomes a charter? We've had those conversations with our realtor, and it is in our sales agreement that there would be no charter schools, and it would have to be for profit for the district and the community, meaning taxable. Yes, plus the zoning change, which we're not going to talk about. If you follow the flow chart with the arrows, you will see the progression moving forward. And this is a hypothetical sale. Yes. Yes. To be incorporated into a new hypothetical. Yes. So what was the question? <laughs> if all the sports. Oh, no, it's not that. The, the, people, the, the people at home just hear silence and, and they hear the answer, but they don't know what the question was. <laughs> so what was the question, please? You didn't use your teacher voice. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, given that Gateway Middle School has a stadium track also a baseball field wonderful facility as well right, right. Uh, currently moss side middle school has two fields the one field nearest the maintenance garage and for the public's information we have had a uh what was the name of the company that did the survey my my third, uh company surveyed the property we were somewhat surprised about the amount of land and acreage that is surrounding Mossside Middle School because there is a field behind Mossside Middle School, directly behind, and also a field to the right that extends past the tree line. We did statistical analysis of a full-size field and track that could fit right on that property where the maintenance garage field is located. So I guess the question is, if the Moss Side Middle School is raised and it, it is a, a new building is placed there, will there be room for things like fields, athletic yes, fields? absolutely. Right. Not just room, there's plenty, plenty of room. Plenty of right? room. Okay, good. We have the field directly behind the uh, Moss Side Middle School school with parking, while we also have the library field that could be utilized as well. With the use of those fields, would there be something constructed at the edge of that tree line so that... Um, I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Bl 
believe it or not, the trees do extend far enough that there would still be trees to move it. I'm not even sure we're that far yet to answer that question. Okay. I know where you're going at though, okay? But legitimate question. <laughs> Throughout the course of the second semester, we had multiple meetings with our K to five, or I should say K to four building principals. One of the analysis studies that we did internally here was to ensure that with our current grade configuration, potentially of K to five, would our students fit comfortably in these buildings with the specials and the inclusion of the special education classrooms that truly weren't in the scenario back in the 80s and 70s where there were 1,200 students in a middle school. So to answer your question, if you can look at this, and I'm gonna use the pointer here. You notice how we have numbers. These are the room numbers, like 23, 24, 22, how they're numbered at CSE. So we wanted to include those room numbers in this building map and we've also color coded all of the classrooms that you will see on the subsequent maps of the elementary building. So when you see kindergarten at UP, Ramsey, Evergreen, they will be highlighted in purple as well. So in speaking with Mr. Jack, understanding the numbers, yes, there would be no issue with our students fitting in to CSE. Another point of reference, Cleveland Stewart Elementary, and I'm gonna ask Bob Brown if you can just review quickly the totals, meaning the enrollment capacity for the elementary schools for our public to hear. these buildings were designed uh, Cleveland Stewart Elementary was designed to hold 412 students now that is students and it doesn't take into account the specials but that's how many children are able to be housed in that area along with Evergreen with the same number uh, you have Ramsey much bigger building 544 children to be able to be um, situated in that building and University Park 448 so as of now we're nowhere near those capacities but these numbers do not reflect the specials that need to go in there and on cue mrs. Beagle had a question <laughs> earlier and um, to answer that question administratively we have been examining the geographical boundaries of our elementary schools, which was last adjusted, of course, back in 2010 when we closed Pitcairn Elementary. During that time, eight years ago, University Park had the fewest students enrolled. In order to make up the difference for a lot of the building, which was empty at the time, Students were reconfigured from the Strohshine Road area that includes apartments and housing complex down that road to currently attend University Park Elementary. Now think about that for a moment. They are bypassing Evergreen Elementary and really CSE, two elementary buildings which are closer. But due to the enrollment at the time, they were shifted. Fast forward eight, nine years later, University Park is almost, not quite, at capacity. So, beginning with the 18-19 school year coming up, all kindergarten students moving in, enrolling in the district, in that area, 
will be attending either Evergreen or CSC. We would not uproot any families that currently have a sibling within those buildings. I feel it is not fair to that family, to that child who has built relationships, to uproot them based off of numbers. They will, of course, grandfather out of the system. And then over the next two years, the enrollment numbers will significantly decrease at University Park. Yep. Evergreen Elementary. See, once again, I'm not sure if that's purple or violet. I don't know what you want to call it. Do we have an art teacher here? Fuchsia. Yes. There would be no cost. The buildings would be maintained the as they are. Would construction the be question? necessary moving the fifth grade down? Down where? To, to the four elementary schools. Good question. Ramsey Elementary. Those people familiar with Ramsey, if you do notice, uh, Mr. DeLaCeni has reconfigured the building to ensure that the grade levels nearest each other uh, are almost connected. Fourth and fifth, you see third, first grade, second grade. University Park. I like that. They got the lines all lined up there. The, the one before was yes jumbled. Well, that's Ramsey. Yeah, pots. Yes, the pods, open air classrooms. One area of concern with University Park would be, as they currently still have, is um, carts being utilized on the all-purpose room. steam room and et cetera. Art. Art on a cart, oops, I'm sorry. Oh, so they're moving art. Yes. Can I make a comment? Yep. This on. Good. It's worth noting, Mr. Brown, that UP does have a little bit of room for expansion if we had to on the second floor, correct? I mean, you can, you can go behind <laughs> to the side. for now. And, and what I mean by that is, th this is still two years away, this configuration with a sale contingent of a building. Many variables could happen over the next two years. Enrollment, move-ins, move-outs. Uh, so this is all, I won't say it again, hypothetical. Gateway Middle School. Examining this with Mr. Telly, he felt it was important to bring the sixth grade closer to the main office. You see the classrooms that would be affected. All the cameras go up now in that row. I wonder why the eighth grade's hidden in that, in that corner over there in the building. I don't know. Am I good to fast forward? Thank you. And, and keep in mind, the high school remains the same. That's why I didn't have the high school map up there. What does this mean overall? And this is something that I've worked with Mr. Shaw on. Uh, 
Mr. Brown, Mrs. Isha, so many different factors come into play. Variables with the sale of the building, of course, consolidation. How does this impact our school finances? With everything as is, if the sale would happen and we would eliminate a building, not counting in construction cost of a new building, we anticipate a projected savings of nearly or over $1 million in operational cost per year. Yes. They would not be ventured in. What, what would not be ventured in? The reverse lease. We don't know the cost. It's all subjective to the sale of the building, who would buy it, if they'd be willing to do so, what would be negotiated. I can't or no, no one can put a number on it at this point. I can't imagine we'd be paying over a million a year. No. All right, we had a question. What happens if there's no sale of Gateway Middle School? Meaning, say there's an offer, the board rejects it. We move into this year, closing out this year. The board can still make that decision to close Mossside Middle School. Two options <coughs> would occur at that point in time. We're sitting on two middle schools. Both would be owned and operated by the district. So a decision would have to be made by the board to utilize Gateway Middle School throughout the next 50 years or continue to list Gateway Middle School and renovate Mossside Middle School to have everything on a campus. Those are decisions that have to be made by this board. Let me see if I can tease that out a little bit. There are some improvements that do need to be made to Mossside Middle School. Correct. And so those improvements would cost money. Correct. So the board would have to balance the question of whether, you know, a, if a sale does not go through, how much money can and should be sent, uh, spent to perform the renovations and upgrades necessary for Mossside Middle School. And so if we pour, you know, some money into it, we should expect to that for that to have a lifespan. Like if we bought a new boiler, the boiler is mm -hmm. expected to last 20 years. So, you know, why buy such a boiler and then, you know, uh, tear the building down in two years rather than 20 years? So all of those, the, the, calculus, the calculus for that needs to be thought through. And there are, as Mr. Schott says a lot of times, there are a lot of moving parts to this. Correct. So to come up with a plan that takes all contingencies um, into, uh, into forethought is just impossible. The, the board and the, the staff need to do their best to look at the pieces, move forward, see where we are from there, and then move forward step by step. In other words, it's not a, a, a single plan that needs to be made and followed through without adjustments. It's an iteratively mm, perfectible process that we're trying to follow right now, taking a look yes. at the history, that which came before us, our current status right now, and projecting into the future. And, and this process pending no sale would also be subjected to a feasibility study by an architect looking at the current facilities, making a determination of primarily a needs assessment, what needs completed or finished to ensure that we have a sustainable middle school. And when I say middle school, there's variables with that as well. If you notice, 
the GMS, I'm sorry, Micah, Micah. There we go. Second floor classrooms. Where are the second floor classrooms out of Gateway Middle? Well, there you go, there you go. The idea behind this would be, in order to preserve our K to four middle schools, if this board chooses to do so, and I believe the public has spoken about that in recent years, if the influx of enrollment occurs, where we have 350 plus students enrolling in kindergarten, our K to four buildings become cramped. There is room at all the buildings to expand. However, one option this board needs to consider would be adding a second floor onto Gateway Middle School for grades five and six to be included, so it's a five, six, seven, eight middle school. We've sat down with Mr. Telly. We have some ideas about a configuration that would occur. Included within the needs that we would have an architect look at would be, of course, a new roof, larger kitchen and cafeteria, which would extend across into Mrs. Perry's area so she can monitor the cafeteria th through exiting her door. Do you, know, do you understand the concept, how it would extend out across there? Yeah. I, know, I knew you would. I knew you'd like that one. Mr. Telly gave me uh, his word that you could handle it. For those at home, some of the teachers in the audience are crying and some are laughing. Yes. <laughs> Expand the gyms and locker rooms. Last time I was over there, I thought I was in a movie Hoosiers from 1955. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Ms. Riley, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty bad. Some work needs done. Work needs done there. Uh, we would be looking to having two full-size gyms in that area. And you know there's room exterior outside the building that could expand out there. Uh, renovate the auditorium. Uh, the shell is fine, however, aesthetically it needs work. Sound system. Uh, Kelly, you're, you're familiar with that, with Kelly's. I mean, you're it is what it is right now, and, and we've been making do, understanding that we've been kicking the can down the road where we got to do something. Elevator, of course, anytime you had a second floor, uh, ADA requirements, elevator for a second floor, floor replacement. Currently, we have the carpet at Gateway Middle School. It does make it quieter. However, I'm a firm believer in when you're doing a renovation and you have the opportunity to add terrazzo flooring nice shiny floors that can last a lifetime it's worth it wiring repairs talk to Mico, given the uh, nature and the age of the building and also the ex exterior upgrades with the fields and parking and security as well the benefits we've already talked about and we're familiar with those yes we're already f familiar with that yep <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where do we have that at? Uh, we just used a blanket term classrooms. That's what we did, yeah. But you're right. I mean, we had well, <coughs> computer, or uh, I'm sorry, science classrooms. Mossside Middle School, there's no science classrooms. They're there, however, they've been retrofitted to be a regular classroom now. Benefits of the Mossside Middle School property, campus location, having everything on the campus. Less property upkeep, administrative offices, notice I have a question mark there, question mark. Whether or not that would be a freestanding building or our offices would be over at Gateway Middle School, that would be the question. 
I knew that would draw the eyes. Mosside Middle School needs, you see it far exceeds the needs for Gateway Middle School. Auditorium, there is no auditorium. Cafeteria and kitchen, considerable upgrades needed. Gym and locker room space. Lockers, those are original 1960 lockers. Do they work? Yes. Have they been painted? Yes. Do they make noise? I, I understand that. Yes. Asbestos throughout the building, huge cost, the abatement. So Dr. Short, you're going through the list right now. If the Gateway Middle School does not sell, and if, we, if this board or the next board chooses to put some money into the Mossside Middle School, this is the list of things for which money would have to be spent. I'm sorry, Absolutely. go ahead. HVAC, restrooms, office, security upgrades. Finally, community involvement. This summer, I will be sending out the invitations. We'll be posting it on the district website, asking for community involvement. Ad hoc committee formed with the objective of identifying the needs and recommendations to the boards, the board for future middle school, singular, pending, not pending sale, visiting, New middle schools, understanding the edu educational components that go into a five, six, seven, eight, or six, seven, eight middle school. Doctor, yes. Turn it on. Uh, actually, I had two questions: one for Gaylord Middle School and one for Mossad Middle School. Yes. Uh, I guess we'll start with Middle. Um, if we would keep that building. It works. And Which one? Mossad Middle. Okay. All right, because we do those renovations. Mm -hmm. That would house what? Six, seven, and eight? Mossad Middle School would be grades six, seven, and eight. Okay. With its current size, because you said you add a couple science rooms, would that building alone be able to handle all three grade levels? Yes. Without any extra. Spacing? Yes. Okay. And, and Brian, I'm not sure if you were here. There were 1,200 students in this building, or that building. I should say. Uh, currently with three grade levels, that would be roughly seven, eight hundred. Oh. Okay. And for Gateway Middle, because um, you mentioned having to expand the cafeteria, by adding six grades and not have to have, I guess, lunchtime, go massive amounts of, of time, would we need to expand that regardless? Mr. Telly? No, I can take six grade tomorrow. Okay. Without any changes. No interruption. Different bell schedule, of course, with uh, lunches, but it would fit perfectly. Okay. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Discuss the needs of facilities and community input. I feel it's important that we have all constituents involved in this process to hear their voices. There are ideas and concepts out there that you know no one person can come up with. So uh, look forward to seeing that invitation uh, will be posted on our district website and i will be blasting something out via email uh, to the community yes <laughs> hi um, in today's climate where security is a very high issue has there been a study or any discussion on having grades 5 through 12 on one campus and whether or not that's the safest option? Um, if indeed they want to build mm -hmm. a new facility in 2021 22, because when one building goes on lockdown, now you have younger kids going on lockdown. Yes. So, what has there been discussion? Uh, absolutely. And one of the options up there was if we do sell the property, of course, the middle school would be built on the campus and in all likelihood uh, with grade configuration it would probably be a five six seven eight right in addition we do have a k-4 to four elementary school on the campus as well mm -hmm. so it does make for a safer campus if that's what you want to say where you have everything together with the security measures in place as well as our school police so hopefully that answers your question 
or are you thinking the reverse? Having I'm kind of thinking I, the I, reverse I being that. the yeah. issue. Yeah. Uh, I look at it as a positive where we would have all the resources in play right there on the campus. So, you know, the, the response time to me would be far greater than having one building away from a campus. Okay. But it's a, it's a relevant question given what's going on in our society. Right. Yes. So if the Gateway Middle School doesn't sell in either configuration, we either keep Gateway Middle School open or we keep Mossside Middle School open, what would we do with that empty building? Are there any plans for our empty building? If the building would be empty, say Mossside Middle School, at some point in time, if we're keeping Gateway Middle School, we would have to, of course, A, either repurpose it, tear it down, there are no plans at this point to decide what would become on that property. And how about costs then? If we don't sell Gateway Middle School and we don't get money from that sale to do these renovations, do we have the money to do these renovations? We, we would have the money. Our uh, bond ratio, our debt ratio is adequate to really fund a renovation of 10 to 15 million. Has Gateway ever considered an alternative education site? Yes, we have. But there's many factors included that that the state oversees. So it's not as simple as us saying we're going to open up an alternative education building. Several years ago, we had it inside our high school, an alternative educational site uh, that housed probably 10 to 15 students. PDE regulations confirmed that we must have a certified teacher do instruction within that alternative ed setting, which really threw the cost out the window for that few students, which is a good problem we have where we have that few students in alternative education. Question? As a parent who has a daughter who goes to UP, um, Currently getting in and out of that particular area, I love UP, mm -hmm. but it is quite testy a little bit because it's a very narrow, the driving, the parking, the, is there any consideration to, yeah, is there any consideration understanding there's residential around that area to try to expand so that buses and cars can be in and off the street safely, mm -hmm. walkers, it is a little touchy now, so just curious. Yes, actually we've taken that into consideration. We do have land there. Um, there are some options with creating some, not roundabouts, but continued roadways to bring buses in one way. Um, unfortunately, our tight spot is the main entrance. We have room in the front, we have room in the back, but we are looking at that because it is a hazard for everybody you know every day so we we definitely are aware of that and taking that into consideration to make the traffic flow smoother and safer and parking. okay do we have any other questions mr common okay this is might be hypothetical or crazy scenario, but you did mention, you know, possible influx of kids maybe down the road. Mm -hmm. All right, so say, you know, we go with uh, Gateway Middle. We put all the kids up there. Now we got this influx that requires the addition of the second floor. If construction won't be able to get that done in the three months that school is out, where would we put those kids during construction? I would not recommend trailers at that point in time. Of course, we would have to look at the study and plans and scope of the work being done at Gateway Middle to expand. Um, Gateway High School went through a $34, $35 million renovation 14 years ago, I believe. Uh, we maintained the operation of the building without a cafeteria, 
without an auditorium, without a library, and with one and a half gyms. So yes, we were able to do so. We had makeshift, if you want to call them tunnels, constructed to allow the kids access from one point of the building to another. I think I was in school when that happened. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Yeah. So just yes. so you know, throughout the day, there's, there's portions of buildings that have dead time, like the cafeteria, like the library, like the LGI, like the gymnasium. So in the event of a renovation where we have to shut down part of the building because of renovations and construction, those places would then become temporary classrooms. You know, you might have a social studies class being taught in a cafeteria, you know, things of that nature. So it's very doable. And conceivably, we would still have Moss Side Middle standing and, and not readily available, but with minor, minor cost, be able to go back into that for a temporary. Sorry, one more question. Yes. Um, so based on the presentation, mm -hmm. it appears that there's a likely chance, if approved by PDE, that fifth grade may be coming to the elementary schools, whether to renovate or the sell of For the, the 2019-20 school year, mm -hmm. possibly, yes. The okay. board would have to make that decision. If they would choose to make that decision, in all likelihood, the vote would probably be in December okay. to begin formalizing the plan to move forward with that. Okay. And with the rezoning of impacting kindergarten only, mm -hmm. do we have any idea of what class sizes will be for those fifth graders? For the fifth graders, mm -hmm. uh, I do not have those with me at this point in time, but they would not exceed um, an adequate amount. An adequate could be, I, I look between 22, okay. 25 students, that would be it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jeanette. So if we're not relocating all this, like at UP, mm -hmm. how did that 60 students for third grade next year number come about to be? Because a month ago it was 80. So I want to know, where did those 20 kids go? And those numbers right now are merely numbers that we projected being in there with movements. And I don't want to get into... Like with movements of kids moving out of the district or it could be kids moving out of the district it could be agreed upon movements we do have some students who have been in the UP system that have moved into another elementary building is that what we're hoping for at this point because no, I'm is... like literally like I'm looking at my kids and this I don't want to see them suffer because they're not getting enough teacher time no one's going to suffer Okay, I'm going to hold you to it. That's, I mean, a, that's a heck of a quote. I mean, it's, it's, I've, I mean, it was a real, I mean, last year we had the same issue, and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we have 80 kids going into third grade, and. I will have an updated number by middle, mid-July. Okay. With enrollment. That's typically when kindergarten tends to drop off. Okay. And then we will have the numbers for the buildings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. You mentioned the realtor earlier in your presentation. What have they given you as like a, a low number and a high number for Mossside Middle School? They really haven't. That, that's not their job. Their job is to rely on this board and the district to provide them with either no price for the building or a price. This board is committed to, at this point in time, listing it as for sale with no cost meaning it's not free, but we're going to accept an offer. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? Half day kindergarten? That would not be my recommendation. I can never say never. There are a number of school districts that have committed to full time and backed off of that given their financial constraints. Um, at this point in time, this board has not even mentioned that as, as an option. So the question was, will Gateway ever go back to half-day kindergarten? Yes. That was the answer. Thank yes. You. Okay, well, thank you very much. We plan on having building grounds meeting monthly moving forward to Dece December, if action will happen. Thank you very much, everyone.